Hello, it's a pretty lovely, lovely good evening once again from here in Delhi and hope as always that each one of you are absolutely, absolutely fine, happy and of course in fine spirits. So welcome to the third session of this particular chapter, India's 103 Business Combination. Hope that each one of you are connected with us and a lovely good evening once again from here to, e to everyone. We are waiting green signal as I keep on chilling uh, because it takes a bit of time before we get connected to students who are connected with us through SAS system. Anyway, lovely good evening in the meantime to MG Gadeshwar Rao Archery and VP Singh. Very lovely good evening. So now we have received the green signal. So also good evening to all those who are connected with us through SAS system also. And now, as I told you, that this is the third session and it's a pretty prominent one. And in this one, we are going to have a discussion with respect to common control. And when we say common control directly, indirectly, it also means we are going to have a bit of discussion uh, with respect to terms like demerger, spin-offs or sale of division. In fact, we will see later on that all these terms are used actually synonymously. But before we proceed further, let me also caution you that it's a pretty important formidable topic. And in case if the question would strike from this particular topic, then surely you are bound to get a very long question and definitely it would comprise near about what we call 16 marks. Correct? It's a pretty strong uh, topic, but not very tough. Don't be under a phobia that this topic is very tough. And uh, Tish Ruthi Sinapati, uh, good evening also. So now we start today's this particular session as usual. Uh, kindly you all are requested to please pull out your pen pencil register whatever it is it is always better I keep on telling and keep on insisting that it is always better to actually write the things correct now in order to understand the topic of common control correct what we have to do just pay attention first of all here first let me write the topic the topic which we are going to discuss today as I told you is common control don't think that you have the notes and surely you, are, you all are going to receive books also. Correct. We have already dispersed the books. Common control. Those who have purchased. Common control. This is the topic which we are discussing today. As I told you, in this particular topic, we are also going to talk about demerger, spin-off, sale of division. And this is a very strong topic. So I would love you to not only pay extra attention, but also, if possible, try to note down the things, correct? In order to comprehend this particular topic, please pay attention over here. We presume that there is a very big organization, correct? This is a very big organization. In order to make you understand, I have to do the things and things I have a habit of doing quite neatly as far as possible, although it is very difficult to write with this electronic pens, correct? We presume that this is a very big organization, correct? Very big organization. Number one, we have presumed that this organization is a very big organization and we further presume that this particular organization has got two divisions, has got two divisions, two separate divisions because it's a very big organization and it has got two separate divisions. We further presume that there is division A and there is division B also, correct? There is division A and there is division B. This is a big organization and this organization has got two divisions. When I say two divisions, let us say this particular division, division A deals with computers. That means it is engaged in what we call manufacturing computers. Further presume that division B is engaged in manufacturing of mobiles. Correct? So this organization, as I told you, is a very, very big organization. Correct? Why I am insisting upon this particular fact? Big organization, you will come to know about this particular fact very soon. And further, we have presumed that this particular organization has got two, op two segments, two separate segments. Correct? Segment A, segment B or Division A or Division B. Presume that Division A is dealing in uh, mobile phones and Division B, is, let us say, is what we call dealing in computers. Since last four or five years, what we are noticing from the perspective of this organization that this division, Division B, is not functioning up to our mark or up to our expectations. What I intend to say is that suppose I happen to be one of the what we call key management personnel of this particular organization. Since last two, three years, actually, I'm noticing that 
this particular organization is not fetching us the sort of return which we are expecting or perhaps they are this particular division is not at all fetching any returns so we have taken a decision now that we are going to dispose of this particular division so organization has decided now that we are going to actually simply sell out this particular division is it clear to you so we entered into an agreement let us say with a company For simplicity's sake, I will call it a new company or new entity. Correct? For simplicity's sake, I will call it new entity. You can also say entity C. So we entered into an agreement with entity C and we decided to sell off this particular division to this particular entity. Is it clear to you? So we have decided to sell off this particular division to this particular entity. Why this decision was taken, I have already told you the reason because since last 4-5 years, this particular division is not functioning up to our mark, so up, up to our expectations. So, entity has decided to sell off this particular division, sell off this particular division to this particular entity. Try to understand this particular point. First of all, this is the big organization. Correct, very big organization. It has got two divisions as you can see. Now one division has been sold to some other division. So you can say one part of this organization has moved out of this particular organization. Now this particular organization is left up with only division A. Correct. So that is why when this particular organization will sell off one of its division to the other entity in that particular case the moment it is going to sell off the division this organization will be termed as demerged entity many among us fail to understand properly the meaning of the demerged entity now this organization will be known as demerged entity is it clear to you or not if it is clear to you please keep on letting me know also this will be known as demerged entity this organization will be known as demerged entity Demerged entity. Merger basically means combine. And demerged entity means we are getting separated from one of the divisions. So that is why the size of this organization has reduced, we can say, in a common layman's language. So this entity will be known as, this organization will be known as demerged entity. Because so often in the books, it will be later on, so, so so many times, later on in the questions, we would face that we have to pass the entries in the demersed entity. First of all, we know actually who is the demersed entity. So, this organization has become the demersed entity. Is it clear to you or not? And this process, please pay attention. Please pay attention and don't let your focus to waver even for a while. Because if you fail to comprehend a single thing, then you won't be able to actually do the question the way actually I would love you to do. Is it clear to you? When this entity, as I told you, sold this particular division to a new entity, then this process, this process, this process will be known as, this process will be known as what? This process is known as sale of division. This process is known as, this process shall be known as sale of division. Sale of division. It is known as sale of division or this process is known as demerger. Demerger. This process shall be known as sale of division or demerger or simply a split off. I had already told you earlier in the beginning of the session that all these three terms we are going to use concurrently and not only concurrently but also synonymously. I hope this particular point everything is clear. Please give me a very quick reply. Is it clear to you up to this particular point? Is it clear to everyone up to this particular point? Last time actually on Saturday when I did not take the class, I received some messages that today there was no class. It was already known to you and I have already actually told in the last session itself that next class will be on Monday. Because your classes time are Monday to Friday. Is it clear to you? But from next time on Saturday and Sunday, I will not be on live but I will start in days. Is it clear to you? So please keep this. I will remind you later on after the session. Is it clear to everyone? Fine. This process is known as sale of division or demerger or split off. 
fine then if up to this particular point it is very clear then what next is now you know that we have sold one of our division to a new entity we sold this particular decision due to some compelling factors for example that we were not having the expected sort of profit or perhaps this particular division was might be what we call uh, incurring heavy losses so due to whatever may be the reason actually we sold out to this particular entity number one now many scenarios could unfold before us and we should be absolutely well acquainted with all those scenarios so that we can do the accounting in a proper manner what exactly common control is i haven't actually described it remember one thing i will describe it later on now when we are going to sell this division to a new entity obviously is one of you are absolutely in the know that we are not going to transfer the division free of cost obviously the new entity will going to give us some consideration is it clear to you now new entity can give the consideration new entity may decide that it will give the consideration directly to the demersed entity that means when you are going to solve the question you will have to pay attention to this particular point because this is going to be the one of the hell of a major point before so that uh, you can actually do the questions in a correct manner so you have to see very closely and very uh, very what we call minutely who is receiving the consideration because there are many scenarios as i have already told you the first one is that the new company may give the consideration to the demersed entity and you know the meaning of demersed entity is it clear to you or not so if in the question it is given that new company has given the consideration to the demersed entity in this case in this case first of all let me write here purchase consideration pc i am writing and i'm marking it this in this manner that mean in this case new company is delivering the purchase consideration to the demersed entity it means if the purchase consideration is being received by the demersed entity from the new entity without any hitch without any hitch and without an iota of doubt you immediately come to the conclusion that this is a case of common control i will explain the meaning of common control but for a while just you simply write then it will become a case of common control because in this case in the as 103 proper will not apply correct there are two methods prescribed under in as 103 to do the accounting in the books of basically the acquirer company one is known as as we have already seen earlier correct that is known as acquisition method whatever we have done so far in this particular chapter that is what we call related to acquisition method where we saw that on the date of acquisition we have to record the assets and liability of fair value with some exceptions also we have to compute nci goodwill etc so this is nothing but this is acquisition method 99.99 percent in practical life under business combination we come across only situations of what we call business acquisitions sorry acquisition method only 99% we have to adopt acquisition method of accounting only. Under rare situations, we may have to adopt common control. Remember one thing, many people actually think that common control is not a part of India S3. No, that is not the case. Common control is part of India S103, but it is a part of Appendix C. In India S103, there is an appendix that is known as Appendix C. Under Appendix C, you have been given common control. Is it clear to you? We will explain the methodology of what we call accounting of common control later on. But first of all, you need to understand in this case that if new entity will deliver the purchase consideration to the demersed entity directly, in this particular case, it will be known as common control. In this case, common control. This will be known as common control case. In this case, we will see later on that in the books of the acquirer, we are going to record all the assets and liability taken over at carrying amount only, not at fair value. Under common control, we will take over all the assets and liability at fair value only. That is the major difference. Is it clear to you? Otherwise, rest of the things are same. So, it will be treated as a case of common control and as per Appendix C, as per Appendix C of India 103, when an entity does the accounting by adopting common control methodology, in that particular case, it is known as pooling interest method. P-O-O-L-I-N-G. Pooling interest method. I will also explain you later on why it is also known as pooling interest method. I will try to give you as much as knowledge. But first, 
at this particular point of time, your focus should be only up to this particular point, whether it is a case of common control or not. Now, what we mean by common control, now I am going to explain. See here, earlier this entity, this division was quite obviously because part of our organization, it was in our control, no doubt about that. Now, this division has been transferred to a new entity. Is it clear to you? This division has been transferred to a new entity. And I told you that new entity has given the consideration to the what we call demersed entity. When new entity is giving the share capital because generally purchase consideration is given in what we call shares only and especially we will see that under demergers etc. Generally the consideration actually flows by way of share capital only. So that means whatever share capital of the new company is there, it has transferred that share capital to the demersed entity. Point to be noted is that even though this division has been transferred to a new entity, now this new entity is, is still in the control of the organization because share capital is held by the organization. When I say purchasing company new entity is delivering purchase consideration to the demersed entity, that means control of this entity is still in our hands. That means situation is exactly what it was prior to the sale of division. Even after the sale of division, the, the situation is similar with respect to control. Are you getting my point or not? Earlier, this entity was under our control and this entity has been now transferred to new entity and new entity is still in our control. So, when such a scenario persists, that situation with respect to control reflects the same similar situation which existed prior to the transfer, then it is known as common control case. Is it clear to you or not why it is known as a case of common control? Because in this case, even after the sale of the division, the control of the new entity is in the hand of the organization. And if it is a case of common control, India's 103 proper will not apply. India's 103 appendix C will apply. That means common control methodology we will have to apply, wherein we will have to apply pooling interest method to do the accounting. And under pooling interest method, as I told you, all the assets and liability will be recorded not at fair value, rather at book value. There are some other what we call uh, facets, which I will explain when I will do the question. Is it clear to you or not? I hope till up to this particular point, things are clear. Now, this is the first scenario. This is the first scenario. Now, second scenario can be like this, that new entity may decide not to give the consideration, not to provide the purchase consideration to the demersed entity. Under the second situation, new entity may decide to give under the second situation, new entity may decide to give the purchase consideration not to the demersed entity, rather to the rather to the members of the demersed entity. Rather to the members of the demersed entity. When I say members of the demersed entity, indirectly it means shareholders of the demersed entity. Under the second scenario, we will see that purchasing company has given the purchase consideration to the members of demersed entity, to the members of demersed entity, to the members of demersed entity, to the members of demersed entity. This is the second scenario. Now in the question, if it is given that the division has been transferred and new entity has decided to give the consideration to the members of the demersed entity. In this situation, in this situation, there may be two more sub situation may arise. Two more sub situation may arise. What are those two sub situations? Pay attention. If new entity provides purchase consideration, if new entity provides purchase consideration, to the members of the demersed entity, then in that particular case, we will have to see what? A. It might be given in the question that new, new entity has given the purchase consideration to the members of the demersed entity and further it may be given in the question that one of the member, one of the member, one of the member means one of the shareholder, one of the member, one of the member, one of the member, one of the member has your holds held, one of the member holds more than 50%, more than 50% of the share capital 
of the share capital of the share capital in new company so if question states that new company has delivered the purchase consideration to the members of the demerged entity and one of the members it is further given that one of the members because such sort of information will be given in the question one of the members holds more than 50% of the stakes in the new entity indirectly it means this entity is still in the hands of this organization why because this shareholder is a because this member is a shareholder of this organization demerged entity and he is having more than 50% of the share capital of this entity indirectly it means this entity is still in the control of the organization that is why even in this case it will be treated as a case of common control is it clear to you that even in this case it will be treated as a case of common control even in this case it will be treated as a case of common control it will be treated as a case of common control is it clear to you or not right sir it is clear to you just wait let me create a bit of space okay there could be situation like this that new entity is is providing purchase consideration to the members of the new entity and now it is written in this manner suppose if it is written in this manner that none of the shareholder or none of the members none of the members none of the members none of the members are you writing or not please let me know be honest none of the members holds more than 50% stakes more than 50% stakes in new company in new company suppose if question says this is scenario a this is scenario b when new entity delivers purchase consideration to the members of the new entity there are three sub situation in fact one we have already seen and second one none of the members holds more than 50% of the shares in the new company in this case in this case it is not treated as a case of common control in this case it will not be treated as a shall not be treated as a case of common control shall not be treated as shall not be treated as shall not be treated as case of common control in this case it will not be treated as a case of common control correct then sir what should we treat it obviously if you are not going to treat it as a case of common control it means it will be treated as it will be it will be treated as as per ndas 103 it will be treated as per ndas 103 that is acquisition method that mean ndas 103 proper will apply because in this case we are going to do the accounting as we normally do under indas 103 is it clear to you this time it will not be treated as a case of common control because in this case new entity is not in the control of the demerged entity is it clear to you or not now there could be third situation also third situation is like this third situation where should i write third situation okay i will write it in this manner the third situation is that it is given in the question this is a this is b and now this is c new company has given the consideration to the members of the demerged entity correct and now it is given in the question that in fact in this case nothing is given in the question in this case no information when i say no information what does it mean there is no information with respect to the fact that whether any shareholder 
is having more than 50% of share capital or not. No such information is given. That mean question is absolutely silent. Question is simply saying that new entity is delivering the consideration to the members of the new entity. Only this much information is available in the question. Now you tell me, in this case, what should I treat? Should I treat it as a case of common control or should I treat it as a, what we call case of acquisition method of accounting that is in day 103 proper? You let me know. Suppose if the question is silent and no further information is given. Now some of you may give us what we call a diplomatic answer, sir, we can treat it as a case of common control also or we can treat it as a what we call acquisition method also and we will write a note. So in this case, honestly speaking, honestly speaking in this case, because every time I should not say that I am the, I'm correct. If some of you would say, sir, we have the liberty in this case to treat it as a case of common control and we will put up a note regarding that. Or if some of you may say, sir, we may treat it as what we call a case of acquisition method and we can simply put up a note. Definitely you can go by this rule. If question is silent, you can write a proper note and do the accounting accordingly. But my advice to you is, my advice to you is that always treat it as a case of common control. Correct? My advice is this, it is always take the presumption that it is a take, it is a case of common control. In this case, it is always better to treat it as a case of common control. Because generally, generally when a new company transfers its business to a new entity, correct, generally somewhere intention always is there to hold the control of the new entity. However, if informations are given in a specific manner, then it is fine. But if question is silent, in that case, it is better, always better to treat it as a case of common control. Is it clear to you or not? Now, as I told you, common control is given under Appendix C of India S 103. That is why we never say that it is India S 103 proper because Appendix C is entirely different thing. Appendix is entirely different thing. Under Appendix C, we are given that under common control, in the books of the acquirer, assets and liabilities will be taken over and taken over at book value number one. And secondly, it is also given it is also given whatever differences will arise as I will talk about correct that we will adjust through capital reserve but that I am going to explain in a short while now we come over to the next point so I hope after going through this particular point things are absolutely clear to you never never allow to skip it that who is the demersed entity number one because I have seen a student often confuses with respect to demersed entity this organization when one of its part will move out of its fold then quite obviously it will be known as demersed entity now the next thing is as I have already told you whenever question is tossed off from common control it is going to contain very high marks and obviously many things would be asked of you so now we come over to the accounting procedure Generally, when question is asked from this particular topic, but good thing is that, good thing is that there is hardly any variety in the in such sort of questions. So, in case if you are going to pay attention towards this particular point, because it is going to consume a way bit of time, but still you can actually do the questions of your own. I will let you know in a short while. Now, the next topic is accounting under common control. Accounting under common control. I am insisting upon this particular fact that kindly, kindly, for God's sake, make a habit of writing. Accounting under common control. Now we are going to do the accounting and think logically. There is no point in doing what we call ratification, isn't it or not? Because that has become our virtues nowadays. So avoid this. Accounting under common control. Generally, when such question will be asked in the examination, you will be asked to first of all pass entries in the books of the demersed entity correct generally you will be asked this particular point so under step number a let me write in the books of demersed entity in the books of demersed entity in the books of demersed entity and now you know the meaning of demersed entity isn't it or not in the books of demersed entity there is no hard and fast rule to cram the entries as I told a moment ago. Think logically and you will see how easy it is. It is not tough. It may appear tough, but it is not tough. Let me, let me assure you this. But how you have to think logically, now pay attention. 
In order to understand this topic comprehensively, please pay attention. Now you think that you are the you are the accountant of the demersed entity. You had two divisions A and B, but now one division is moving out of you. Is it clear to you? When we say that you are selling one of your division, what does indi what does indirectly it means? It means you are disposing of all the assets and liabilities of that particular division to a third party or to what we call another entity. The important point is that you were earlier having a division. You were having two divisions A and B and presuming that this division is being transferred. So whatever assets this division contained and whatever liability this division contained, obviously now you are going to actually transfer those assets and liability to the party to whom actually you are selling off this particular division. So quite obviously as the accountant of this entity you have to think on such what we call lines. Now you let me know suppose you are the accountant of the demersed entity and you are selling off one of the division indirectly it means you are selling off the assets and liabilities so that means assets are moving out. If assets will move out that means assets of the entire organization this is the entire organization assets of the entire organization will reduce isn't it or not. So that means you are going to write here two assets account first of all you write in and intentionally I have left these three lines. First of all, you need to write two assets account. Whatever assets you have transferred or sold, correct, you are going to credit all those assets. I hope you got this particular point. There is no need to cram anything. Think logically. You are the accountant of the demersed entity and you are losing out some assets because assets will move out of your business. Likewise, liability will also move out your business. If liability will move out of your business, that means the liability of the organizations are reducing. So quite obviously, you are going to debit the liability which, which have been taken over by the new entity. So liability account debits. So you are going to debit the liabilities. So that means all the assets and liability of this division have been given now to the new entity but obviously you are not going to give all those assets and liability free of cost you are going to receive something there will be some agreement between what we call demersed entity and the new entity that what amount you are going to deliver correct that new that amount of course is known as purchase consideration you are going to debit the new entity for the same because you are supposed to receive some amount from the new entity against the sale of this particular division so I will write here new entity or new company account. So why we are debiting new company because new company is supposed to pay us some consideration for assets and liabilities taken over. Is it clear to you or not? New entity has taken over assets and liability and against the same it will have to give us some consideration. It is the so new company is almost like a data company for us. Is it clear to you or not? Perfect. Any problem this up to this particular stage? No problem, sir. It's quite obviously in this process, in this particular process, because you are giving assets and liability. Let us say 100 net assets worth rupees 100 you have given to the new entity. So you might receive purchase consideration more than that or lesser than that. And accordingly, there will be some loss or what we call gain. Is it clear to you or not? If there is loss, obviously you are going to debit it with call it loss on sale or simply loss on reconstruction because all these processes are known as reconstructioning screens also anyway loss on sale you will write here in case if there is any loss correct in case if there is any profit obviously you are going to write to profit on sale very simple there is no need to cram anything profit on sale if you are going to think logically your concepts are absolutely strong i'm telling you it should appear to you almost like a cup of coffee. Now let me let me explain further. If there is a loss, obviously you are going to write it off. Obviously loss will have to be set off against something. Logically, if I have written this entry and if there is a loss, then logically this loss will have to be debited. Now here the test of a professional will come into the foray. Your knowledge will be tested because generally we are crammed by the books that this loss will be set off against so and so. Nothing. Pay attention. There are always some rules. If there is a loss, then first of all, you will settle it against capital reserve if it is there. 
if you have a capital reserve better to set off this particular loss against the capital reserve however if you are not having the capital reserve then you can set it off against your revenue nature reserves like profit or loss account general reserve that mean after passing down this particular entry logically you should pass another entry logically you should pass another entry to write off this particular loss but in examination generally you do not have that much of time to unnecessarily stretch the what we call solution is it clear to you it is expected of you as a professional how deaf you are in condensing the things and is still keeping the context intact that is the art so instead of going for this entry separately what you do write in bracket always suppose if you have the capital reserve write in bracket capital reserve suppose that mean you are setting off this loss against the capital reserve if you are not having the capital reserve i have already told you you can set it off against revenue reserve when you are going to write in bracket in this manner examiner will understand that you know that this particular loss will be set off against these reserves correct so you need not require to write then separately this particular entry you need not require to write off then sorry show separately this particular entry that is my point is is it clear to you so if there is a loss and just think for a while if you have the capital reserve simply write capital reserve in bracket and if you know that capital reserve is not there but we have to lie so, but we have to write off this loss then you will have to take into account revenue reserves is it clear to you now regarding profit if there is a profit the rule is that profit will always be credited to capital reserve so instead of passing another entry profit on sale account debit to capital reserve you simply write in bracket capital reserve so you will avoid what we call writing unnecessary un entries is it clear to you or not is it clear to you till up to this stage things are clear it is fine so under it your first entry will be like this very simple in the books of demerged entity there is no problem at all now see here next point you just think of for a while because if you are going to cram the things the things will never be clearer to you but if you are going to think logically you you will have to study only once let me assure you even though we are consuming a bit of time later on you will see how quickly we are actually doing this question as you must have noticed under what we call a gain on bargain purchase nci question we did we did them very what we call quickly because we were we are quite well acquainted with the concept similar is the case here first it, let me take the time and don't think we will finish the course much before the stipulated time this is my assurance now please pay attention after this entry when you have transferred the asset when you have transferred the liabilities and you have passed the entry what else could be possible what else could be possible think of this only thing remaining is that with respect to consideration isn't it or not so next step in the books of demerged entities with respect to consideration with respect to consideration with respect to consideration but i have already told you that consideration there are many situation with respect to consideration if consideration is received by the demerged entity this is one situation so let me write here as far as entries with respect to consideration is concerned that depends upon the fact whether the consideration is received by the demerged entity or by the members of the demerged entity is it clear to you consideration received consideration received by consideration where is the scale consideration received by suppose consideration has been received by demerged entity if consideration has been received by demerged entity what will be the entry pay attention here received by demerged entity suppose if consideration is received by demerged entity demerged entity what will be the entry you are doing the accounting in the books of demerged entity and you are actually receiving the what we call consideration this time from the new entity directly you are receiving the consideration ultimately see here the point is that please pay attention here i wrote if consideration is received by the demerged entity in this particular case because you are going to receive the consideration and in the first entry 
you have debited the new company account and new company has now given the purchase consideration. Obviously, one thing is clear that you are going to credit the new company because new company has discharged the consideration. So new company account will be credited, number one. And consideration, whatever consideration you have received from the new company, because I told you, although consideration can be received in any form, but generally under merger, demergers, we receive the consideration in shares. So I am writing shares in new company account, shares in new company account, shares in new company account debit to new company account. So, if consideration has been received by demersed entity, this entry you will have to pass provided you are receiving the entire consideration in shares. If you are receiving some portion in cash, you will also debit the cash account. But generally, as I told you, under merger demergers, the consideration trunk gets transferred in the form of share capital. I am not telling. At no point of time did I tell that cash cannot be received or given. Now, with respect to consideration, the second situation could be when consideration is not received by, not received, or should I write, received by demersed entity, received by, sorry, members of demersed entity. If consideration has been received by members of demersed entity, members of demersed entity, what entry you are going to pass. See here in this particular case, you have to be very careful in this case. Because in your entry, you have debited the new company. Whenever new company will discharge the consideration and whether it is received by the demersed entity or whether it is received by the members of the demersed entity, irrespective of that, you are going to credit the new company account. It is very important because when new company has dis discharged its liability of paying the consideration, you cannot let it stay on the debit. So you will have to credit the new company account because new company has discharged the consideration. Whether consideration is being received by demersed entity or whether it is received by members. So if consideration has been received by members, that means that mean you are not receiving the consideration. It is being received by, it is being received by other shareholders. Paris Gadyanwar says no entry. Yes, you can say that in this case, we are not going to pass any entry, but we are going to pass as pass the entry. See here what I have written here. Why we are passing an entry? You are right. Perhaps you might have studied from somewhere else. There is another method of dealing with that where entries are passed and not passed. But what I have written here in the first entry, we have debited the new company. Correct? So new company account must be credited whether the purchase consideration has been received by demersed entity or not. Because now new company has discharged its obligations. So new company will be credited. But the point is that in your books, you have already debited new company. That means you were expecting to receive something, and now you are not going to now you are not going to receive anything from the new company because new company has already delivered the consideration to your members. You are not receiving the consideration, so it is almost like debtors turn what we call turning off bad debts, because in my books I have shown some debtors and I am not receiving anything from them. Are you getting my point or not? So it will be treated as a sort of loss to the new loss to the demersed entity. It will be treated as a loss to the demersed entity. It is treated as a loss and you will write, you will debit either capital reserve. If you have the capital reserve, whenever there will be losses, always better to write capital reserve for the same or what we call revenue reserves. If there is no capital reserve, that means Whatever loss is taking place, we are setting it off against capital reserve or revenue reserve. It is a sort of loss actually for you. I hope you got this particular point and why it is a loss to you because you have debited new company in the very first entry. So that means you are reflecting new company as your data, but you are not receiving this time from the new company. But at the same time, new company has discharged the obligations. So your debtors are reducing and you are not receiving anything. So it will be treated as a sort of loss and loss, first of all, will be debited to capital nature reserve. And if capital nature reserves are not there, then only you will set them off against what we call revenue reserves. 
So these two entries you will have to take care of in the books of demersed entity. Correct? In the books of demersed entity, first of all, they will they will ask you one entries and they may ask you to prepare a balance sheet. Under the second step, you may have to prepare a balance sheet as far as accounting in the books of demersed entity is concerned. Preparation of the balance sheet and preparation of balance sheet is so easy. Preparation of balance sheet. Preparation of demersed entity. Correct. So that means after the sale of division, we will have to prepare the balance sheet and it is not a tough nut to prepare the balance sheet. It is very easy. Why it is so easy? Let me explain this particular point. Let us say there are two divisions A and B and division B, division B is being sold out. For simplicity's sake, let me see, let me say property plant and equipment were 10 lakh and 5 lakh. So total property plant and equipment of the organization is equal to 15 lakh. Because we have sold out this division, we are left off with only property plant and equipment 10 lakh. So in the balance sheet, we will simply show what we call 10 lakh worth of property plant and equipment. It is as simple as that. That means we will pluck out all the assets of what we call that division which we have sold out. We will pluck out all the liabilities of the division which we have sold out. And whatever we are left off with, we will simply let it stay in the balance sheet and our new balance sheet will be prepared within a flick of second. So it is not a very tough nut to what we call prepare the new balance sheet. We will see later on how easy it is. It is not tough, provided you have done the entry portion quite well. Correct. Now we move over to the, this was step number A in the books of demersed entity. Now question, as I've already told you, question will be pretty strong and question will be a little bit tough also. So under the second major point, they may ask you accounting in the books of, accounting in the books of new company in the books of new entity or in the books of new company in the books of new company accounting in the books of new company now you will have to do the accounting in the books of new company whenever you have to do any accounting always think of from the perspective of the entity for which you are supposed to do the accounting so now you are being asked to do the accounting in the books of the new company you presume for a while that now you are accountant of the new entity is it clear to you? Now suppose if you happen to be new entity, when you are going to take one of the division of the other entity, obviously that means you are taking over some assets, you are taking over some liability. It, you have to think on such lines. The, as I've already told you, it is not possible to cram the things. Only thing is that you have to be, you, you have to think logically. So under it, first of all, one entries, Question looks pretty long, but actually it is not the case. Correct? You, you will notice very soon. Now, as far as entries is concerned, the first entry will be for taking over, for taking over assets and liabilities. For taking over, for taking over assets and liability. For taking over assets and liabilities. For taking over assets and liabilities so you will take over all the assets and liability you are the new entity if you are going to take over the asset asset will come to you so that means asset from your perspective will increase so i will write here assets account because we are following common control all the assets which we are going to take over we are going to take them over at book value it is important to note I will write later on the characteristic of common control also. Don't worry about that. Assets account debit. Then obviously you are taking over some liabilities. So you are going to write here two liabilities. Two liabilities. All the liabilities will be recorded at book value or carrying value as we call them. Is it clear to you? Obviously for taking over this assets and liability, you are under an agreement to pay some consideration. So you will write here to consideration payable account or simply consideration account because you are supposed to pay considerations. It is a liability for you. Now, from the perspective of the new company, if there is any loss, pay attention what I am saying. First of all, if there is any profit, 
you are going to write here two capital reserve. Two capital reserve. If there is any profit, if there is any loss, please pay attention what I am saying. Many authors, they commit this mistake actually. They say that you simply write goodwill because what we have learned that if balancing figure comes over here, we have to write goodwill. If balancing figure comes here, we have to write capital, capital reserve in the books of acquirer company. We have already seen this, isn't it or not? But try to understand. Logically, we will not write goodwill. Even though in your module also in some question it is written goodwill. Goodwill should not be written over here. Why I am saying so, I will tell you, but let me first of all write. Whether the balancing figure arises here, of course it is a capital nature profit, so I will write two capital reserve. And even if there is a loss, I will still write capital reserve. In case of acquirer company, I am not going to write the word goodwill. However, under India S handed in three, if it would have been, if we would have been doing accounting as per acquisition method, of course here I would have written goodwill and here I would have written capital reserve. But if I am doing the accounting as per common control, I should not write the word goodwill even though it this difference is arising towards the debit side. Why? Because, because one of the characteristic of the common control is that I told you one characteristic characteristic is that one feature is that all the assets and liability will be taken over taken over at book value that is carrying amount and second no new asset should be recognized no new asset should be recognized that is the reason we should avoid writing goodwill account although it is not going to have any implication as far as solution is concerned but it is better to write capital reserve is it clear to you or not it is better to write capital reserve. Capital reserve debit balance also means goodwill itself because this is negative of goodwill. Is it clear to you? Capital reserve debit balance means it is nothing but goodwill. But you should avoid writing goodwill because it is clearly stated that not a new asset will be recognized. Is it clear? I have mentioned two characteristic. As far as common control is concerned, all the assets and liability will be taken over at book value. Number one, Number two, no new asset should be recognized. That means you should avoid what we call using the word goodwill. And there is third characteristic also, but which I am not going to tell you at this particular moment. I will tell you at a particular point of time. After having written this particular entry, quite obviously, now the second entry will be, second entry will be with respect to discharge of consideration. Because new company is under an obligation to discharge the consideration it will discharge and irrespective of the fact whether it is paying the consideration to the demersed entity or to the members of the demersed entity irrespective of that it will simply pass the entry for discharging the consideration isn't it or not so entry will be consideration account debit consideration account debit consideration account debit consideration account debit to share capital account presuming that consideration is being paid by way of shares by way of share capital in case of some cash is also being paid we will write simply to cash also now after this question may also ask to prepare balance sheet this is step number one as far as books of new company is concerned one entries then second you will have to prepare the balance sheet also and very easy to prepare the balance sheet as far as balance sheet preparation is concerned it is very easy you will have to look only towards these two entries as far as balance sheet of purchasing company is concerned you will have to focus only on these two entries because whatever assets they have taken over they will now appear in the what we call balance sheet of the new company of course towards the asset side similarly let us say there is a loss and there is a debit balance of capital reserve you will write it under other equity item as a negative item liability will be put towards the liability side consideration here it is credited here it is debited so consideration is cancelled out suppose if there is a profit that means capital reserve so it will be reflected under under what we call other equity on the contrary then share capital, whatever share capital you have issued, you simply will show it as an item of equity that is share capital and your balance sheet is done. It is as simple as this. So preparation of balance sheet is not a tough nut to crack as far as this particular thing is concerned. But before we proceed, it is always better to actually take care of supplement the discussion with the help of one example. Correct. 
I hope the things still up to this particular point is clear to you. Is it clear to you or not? Please let me know of that. All these things are clear to everyone or not, whatever we have discussed today. Then only we will proceed to do the question. Yes, please let me know. Things are clear or not, please let me know of that. All clear, Krishna God says, and then Pareesh Gadhyanva, yes, T. Shruti Sinapati says, yes, Ravi Bajaj says, yes, almost it seems everyone is present today. MGA Gadishwar Rao Archery. I hope I have pronounced correctly, yes, thank you to hear of you and those among all those who else are also present, please let me know of their viewpoints so that we also come to know. I hope now each one of you are having the notes and soon we have already dispersed the books. Remember one thing, it consumes a bit of time as you know, before the book reaches your hand. And uh, Sam says, yes, so okay, now we presume that everyone is comprehending the things and things are coming up to your expectations and definitely you are liking, I should say, the quality of the class also. Correct? Jagadish, okay, Jagadish, Jagadish, right, right, M Jagadishwar, thank you, thank you so much, because it is written in smaller words, no, sometimes it becomes very difficult to actually comprehend the things, okay, be honest, don't look at the solution, don't look at the solution, try to do this question of your own, even though I haven't solved a single question, let me see actually how well you are able to understand, first let me explain the question, AB Limited has two divisions, A and B, there is an organization. It has got two divisions, A and B, and division A has been making constant profit, while division B has been making constant losses, that is suffering from losses. The division-wise balance sheet on 31st of March 2023 is given to you. Correct? You're right. Once you will go through the sums, it will be absolutely clear. Let's have a look over here now. So these are the two divisions, Division A and Division B. And Division B is suffering the losses. Obviously, this division will later on, we will see, will be sold out to a new entity. Note down their assets and their liabilities carefully. See here, and there is an R to, R to actually note down the things. For example, here you are given fixed asset or property, plant and equipment at cost. In bracket, it is written tangible. 500, 1000 is the gross amount. Their depreciated amount is 450 and 800 and their written down value is given 50 and 200 and total is 250. That means till up to this point would come across one asset that is property plant, one item, sorry, property plant and equipment and the written down value is 50, 200 and 250. Correct. Further, we are given in this particular question that current asset. Now we are given current asset also. Now, as far as current assets are concerned, we see that current assets are given to us as 400, 1000 and total is 1400, correct? 400, 1000, 1400 and just to zigzag the things, they have written current liability, less current liability, less current liability. Important point is that one property, plant and equipment is given in the question, you note it down carefully. And then you are given current asset also. This is the second item which you have recorded, which you have to see to it, correct? And then there is third item in the form of liability, current liability, correct? And then just to confuse you, they have written net current asset. We are not concerned with the net current asset. You simply go over, go over to the items. Now the next item is loan. Next item is loan. Now, as far as loan is concerned, this is another liability. So, as far as liability is concerned, one is current liability, second is in the form of loan. One is current liability, second is in the form of loan and loan amount is nil and 600 and total loan is 600. Correct? Then we have been given share capital and items of other equity. As far as items of other equity is concerned, Division A is having positive other equity, say retained earnings, and it is having negative. So net amount is 150 given in the outer question. When you have gone through the question, you have to shorten it in this sense. For example, when you went through the question, you came across that property, plant and equipment is given in the balance sheet like this. 
it is given in this manner property plant and equipment at written down value is 50 you mark it out somewhere in your rough in this manner and 200 is it clear to you another item was current asset you also simply mark it out that is equal to 400 and 1000 besides these two items you have been given current liability as we saw 50 and what we call 800 is it clear to you 50 and 800 correct and then you mark out another liability in the form of loan also so you have seen the loan amount is given to you as dash and 600 loan amount is given to you as dash and 600 total is 600 is it clear to you and then you are being given capital and other equities we have to take care of only assets and liability so if you will look closely actually this balance sheet contains this item of course it is at written down value now further the question says that this is an art that is what i meant by it now division b along with its assets and liabilities was sold off for 50 lakhs to x limited so division b is moving out so you mark out that division b is moving out and what is the amount of purchase consideration it is clearly mentioned in the question that you are selling out this division for 50 lakhs to x limited correct to another entity you are selling it out the name of the new company is x limited and purchase consideration is 50 lakhs is it clear to you right sir a new company further it is given which issued 2 lakh equity shares of 10 each at a premium of 25 per share first of all it is given that in order to settle 50 lakhs 50 lakhs rupees the new company is going to issue 2 lakh shares 2 lakh shares it is going to issue 2 lakh shares and the face value of the share is 10 face value of the share is 10 but this entity will issue the share at a premium of 15 per share 15 per share that means new company is delivering 2 lakh share at an issue price of 25 it comes to 50 lakhs is it clear to you is it clear to you or not right further it is given that new company will deliver the consideration to the members of b division in full settlement of the consideration in proportion to their shareholding in the company the new company is going to settle correct the new company is going to settle the consideration to whom the new company is giving the consideration kindly please let me know new company is going to give the consideration to the members of members of the merged entity members is it clear to you per share to members is it clear or not so this is very important point as I told you earlier, when you start what we call solving the question, you have to keep an eye whether the consideration has been received by demersed entity or whether it has been received by the members. Now, in this question, it has been received by members. So, quite obviously, if it is received, because if it would have been received by the demersed entity without an iota of doubt, I would have treated it as a case of common control. Now, if it is a case of members, I have to see is any further information is given in the question or not. Now, in this question, it is not given that one of the shareholder is having more than 50% share. It is not given. If it would have been given, I still would have treated it as a case of common control. Neither it is given that none of the member is having 50%. So, that means question is silent. And just a moment ago, I told you if the question remains silent, it is always, it is always better to treat it as a case of common control on the assumption that demers entity is still having the control of the new entity is it clear to you or not so on this basis now we can start solving this particular question that means you can see the question looks pretty long actually it is not pretty long it is it has got only this much of assets correct two assets two liabilities besides that actually there are some items of other equity share capital and other equity is it clear to you or not fine sir if it is fine i will solve one question for you and in the question it is being this question has been straightway taken from your module also let me also tell you but you need not require to touch your module in case if you want to touch your module you you do it once we will finish off with the chapter you will see that all the questions have already been done correct moreover there are some misprints also that's the reason actually i caution you better to concentrate and have complete faith upon me correct 
Assuming that there are no other transactions, you are required to show general entries in the books of AB Limited. AB Limited is the demurst entity, number one. Number two, prepare the balance sheet of AB Limited. This is what exactly I told you that it will be asked in the question in the books of demurst entity. You will have to pass the entry. You will have to prepare the what we call balance sheet. Further, it is given that we have to pass the entries in the books of X Limited new company. And of course, we are supposed to prepare the balance sheet in the books of the new entity. The problem is that a student become very happy when they see that entire thing is given in a solved manner. Correct? I have seen actually. I can see the gleeness. You know the meaning of gleeness? Right, sir. Gleeness means I can see how joyful you become when you see the entire solution is done. So, you are escaped of what we call writing of anything. Isn't it or not? This is the feeling you people actually derive. Don't commit this mistake. Problem is that. I will come to know who is writing and who is not writing. Remember one thing, correct? Otherwise, you people will not get the sort of marks. Please pay attention and promise to yourself that you are supposed to actually do this question as I am doing in front of you. First of all, write step number one. Question has asked general entries in the books of general entries in the books of AB Limited. So journal of AB Limited. AB Limited is your demersed entity, isn't it or not? Demersed entity. Demersed entity, one part of it is moving out. So, if one part of this entity is moving out, we will see to it which part is moving out. Division B is moving out. We will have to focus over the assets and liability. There are two assets to liability. So, first entry will be one. In fact, A, you write transfer of assets and liability transfer of at least for God's sake write one question complete solution in your own handwriting you will see the difference transfer of all assets and liability transfer of all assets and liability transfer of all assets and liability correct it is always better now it is trend is to write the narration at the top rather than at the bottom correct now look into the assets and liabilities of the demersed entity. First of all, okay, let me write in this manner because we have already seen the entries. As you know, we will have to debit the new company. I am simply writing new company. New company account debit. Whatever is the name of the new company. New company is supposed to pay us 50 lakh. Correct. Figures are in lakhs. I will write somewhere later on. Correct. So, 50 lakhs they are supposed to pay us. So, I will debit the new company because we are supposed to receive. And then we will take into account which are the liabilities which are moving out because we will have to debit those liabilities. There are two liabilities in the question as far as of division B is concerned. If you, re if you remember, one was loan and amount of loan was I think 600 lakhs. And then there was current liability and current liability of what we call division B was 800 lakhs. 800 lakhs and there are two assets two asset one is property plant and equipment that is fixed asset right in bracket 1000 that is the gross value although it is not necessary you can straight away write what we call written down value written down value is 200 and there is another asset in the form of current asset so i will write here two current asset and current asset was 1000 this is the entry which we will have to put up now i will total it Debit side exceeds actually, that is 1450 minus 200. Obviously, in this case, what we find, we find that there is profit, isn't it or not? If there is profit, how you are going to write? First, you write here to capital reserve and write in bracket profit on sale. In the books of demersed entity, correct? If there would have been loss, I told you, you could have debited the loss first to capital reserve, then to revenue reserve. So, profit on sale. This will be your balancing figure and balancing figure you have transferred to capital reserve. Profit will always be transferred to capital reserve. 250. This is the first entry. Now we have to pass the second entry. Second entry depends upon the fact whether consideration is being received by the demersed entity or by the members. Second, consideration. In this case, Consideration is received by the member. We are not supposed to, demersed entity is not supposed to receive the consideration, but we have debited the new company. So, first of all, we will cancel out our debtors, that is new company, 
and because we are not receiving anything from new company because that is being received by the members so obviously it is a loss because it is a loss and there is a balance in capital reserve how much actually i am supposed to receive i was supposed to receive 50 lakh please pay attention this is a loss loss to us i have already told you this loss can be debited to revenue reserves also it can be debited to capital nature reserve also but it is always better to write it off first against the capital reserve because this entire scenario is of capital nature transfer of business isn't it or not so because in the capital reserve there is a balance of 250 so it is better to transfer this loss to capital reserve why it is a loss to us because demerged entity is not receiving anything from one of its debtors you can say in a simple language correct so that is why we have cancelled out new company account and we are not receiving anything so it is it will be treated as a sort of loss to us is it clear to you or not fine sir after this after this we are supposed to prepare the balance sheet so under what we call demers under the accounting process of demers entity first step was journal of ab limited and then step number two balance sheet of demers entity balance sheet of demers entity now in order to prepare the balance sheet of the demers entity nowadays we prepare balance sheet only as per division 2 correct division 2 as per division 2 we are going to prepare the balance sheet and in order to prepare the balance sheet first of all you write one assets and under the asset again i have seen actually a student professional student they commit lots of mistake in preparing the balance sheet not only preparation of the balance sheet but in writing the things in a proper perspective under division one first under division two sorry first of all division two is applicable to companies following the nds under nds we always write as per division two assets first under the assets we always write first non-current asset write nca non-current asset under the non-current asset, I am going to write property, plant and equipment. Although in the question it is given fixed asset, I will write in bracket fixed asset. Correct? Now, there were two fixed assets, sorry, there were two divisions. Correct? There were two divisions. You can look into the balance sheet. In the column of the total, the third item is being reflected as 250. This is the total of the written down value of property, plant and equipment. Out of 250, you have transferred 200 worth of property, plant and equipment at written down value to the other entity. So you will be left off with property, plant and equipment at written down value. At written down value, 50. Correct? So you will write here amount in lakhs. And amount will be 50. Is it clear to you? It is very simple to prepare the balance sheet. Similarly, the next item actually is current asset. Now, as far as current assets are concerned, the current assets of division B has gone out and current assets of A are only remaining. So, we will write them 400. Very simple. You can see how easy it is, it is to prepare the balance sheet. Total will become 450. Total is equal to 450. Is it clear to you or not? Absolutely clear, sir. After this, we will move over to the next part. That is as liabilities, equity and liabilities. You write here equity and liability. Under the equity and liability, what is what you are supposed to write? First of all, write one equity. Please write equity. If we have written equity, write a share capital always first write share capital of course share capital of the organization will always come here 50 is it clear to you share capital of the organization will always come in the balance sheet coming over to the other equity item other equity item other equity item as far as other equity item is concerned pay attention again here i have seen many people commit lots of mistakes First of all, look into the other equity of Division A. The equity of Division A is, uh, I think, equity of Division A, I have forgotten. And it is, it is how much? Mm -hmm. 350, as you can see, correct? 
सो इक्विटी और डिविजन ए इज थ्री फिफ्टी सो लेट बी राइट थ्री फिफ्टी फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल थ्री फिफ्टी थ्री फिफ्टी इज गिवेन टू अस इज इट क्लियर टू यू एंड सी हियर इक्विटी ऑफ द अदर डिविजन डेट इज डिविजन बी नाउ थिंक फॉर ए वाइल मैनी पीपल एक्चुअली कॉन्स्ट्रू कॉमन कंट्रोल इन ए रॉन्ग फैशन Why I am saying so? Pay attention here. It is very important to exp to explain the confusing point early in the stages. Many people think that under common control, because common control means pooling interest method, and pooling interest method means you have to pool. You have to pool means you have to combine. It is known as pooling interest method also. Under pooling interest method, of course, we combine assets and liability just. Correct. Think of the in this manner, and similarly, many people think that new company will take over the asset, will take over the liability, and new company will take over the reserves also. New company will take over the reserves also. Many people are under this sort of confusion, but let me clarify it. New entity will take over reserves only if it will have some positive balance. no entity or no man worth his salt will take over any losses of the other entity unnecessary are you getting my point or not so this time division b is having losses so their reserves will not be taken over it is as simple as that is it clear to you or not indirectly common under the common control we will take over the asset we will take over the liability we can take over the reserves also provided reserves of that division which is being sold out is showing positive balance so that is the point which you need to keep in your mind we haven't transferred the reserves even though it is a case of common control simply because the other reserve is reflecting negative balance so other reserve hasn't been taken over so we will have to add it but problem is that other reserve is having the negative balance as we can see isn't it or not other reserve is having negative balance So three fifty minus two hundred is equal to one fifty. That is already given in the outer column, also, isn't it or not? But here you have to be little bit more careful, because in this question, when you wrote the entry, first of all there was capital reserve here. That means first of all there is a credit balance. So and capital reserve is a part of other equity. You will add two hundred because of you will add two fifty. Sorry, not two hundred because credit balance is two fifty. So you will add two fifty. and then because in the next entry there was loss you debited capital reserve so capital reserve debit balance minus 50 is it clear to you or not ultimately in the outer column how much you are going to reflect 150 400 minus 50 that is equal to 350 so 350 you are going to reflect in the outer column i hope this particular point is clear is it clear to you This is the balance given in the balance sheet, three hundred fifty minus two hundred, and this we took from the entries. Is it clear to you? Now, besides that, besides that, uh, other after other equity in this particular question, two non-current liability in this question there is no non-current liability. Was there any non-current liability? Yes, sir. There was non-current liability in the form of loans, but problem is that. the loan has been transferred so now we are left of with no non current liability so current liability and current liability only of division a will come now in the balance sheet that is 50 so if i will tell you 50 plus again so it will be equal to 450 so not a big task as far as preparation of balance sheet of the demerged entity is concerned now under step number 3 which is asked in the question that is journal of new entity journal of new entity so journal of new entity that is x limited or z limited whatever it is journal of new entity i am simply writing now as far as new entity is concerned new entity has taken over our two assets property plant and equipment at a written down value of rupees 200 so new entity is going to debit property plant and equipment besides that new entity took over our current asset 
current asset and current asset was was worth rupees 1000 i think so 1000 right and new entity took over our liabilities in fact loans as far as loans were concerned loans were 600 and new entity took over current liability and current liability is worth rupees 800 pay attention here and new entity is going to deliver consideration how much new entity is supposed to pay us consideration how much consideration what should I write? Because new entity is giving us 50 lakhs worth of consideration. It is given in the question. And it was also given that new entity will discharge the, that consideration by issuing share of rupees 10 each at an issue price of 25. So 2 lakh into 25 becomes 50 lakh. This point is very, very confusing. Pay attention and don't write here because I have to explain something. That is why something I'm going to do intentionally wrong, then I will rectify. Suppose here if I write consideration 50 suppose if i write consideration here 50 rupees correct suppose if i write consideration which is given in the question as 50 and if i would have then computed the difference 1450 minus 1200 difference would have been equal to 250 in that case obviously this is a loss but i told you in the books of acquirer company under common control whether difference arises towards debit side or towards credit side you have to use capital reserve term capital reserve no doubt it is a loss 250 in that case difference would have been 250 is it clear to you or not is it clear to you okay Technically speaking, this consideration 50 lakh comprises of nominal value. Don't write at this moment, correct? Because I have to explain. This is very confusing point and so you have to understand it better. Suppose if I compute the nominal value because purchasing company is issuing 2 lakh shares of rupees 10 each, so nominal value will be equal to 20 lakhs. And security premium is equal to security premium will be equal to 2 lakh into 15 they are issuing shares at a premium of 15 per share that is equal to 30 lakhs so total 50 lakhs is it clear to you now suppose in this particular case suppose i would have written this this particular entry the first entry if i would have written in this manner and there is nothing wrong in it because we are being given purchase consideration 50 lakh, Krishna Gaur has said, said that 20 lakh and you are right, I will come to that particular point. But in order to make you understand, I am moving this way around. We will write, we will see later on, we cannot write here 50 lakh. But just to tell you actually, it is very important to understand that why we are writing here 50 lakhs, why we are not writing here 50 lakhs, even though consideration is given 50 lakhs. So first I have written consideration as it is given in the question. If I am writing here 50 lakhs, then my loss will be equal to 250 lakhs. Is it clear to you? In that case, later on when I would have prepared the balance sheet, as you know, as far as balance sheet is concerned, under the, under the balance sheet, especially under equity and liability when we show other equity items, under the other equity item, this capital reserve will find place to the extent of 250. Isn't it or not? This capital reserve will find place to the extent of 250. And besides that, there is a consideration to the extent of 50 lakhs, but this consideration comprises of 30 lakhs worth of premium. And premium would have been existed over here 30 lakhs. Are you getting my point or not? Now, this is a loss. 250 is a loss actually because it is a debit balance. And premium would have been 30 lakhs. So, net loss would have been 220. Are you getting my point? Correct. If I would have had written here 50 lakh, in fact, I have written here 50 lakh. If I am writing here 50 lakh, it's still in the other equity, I am getting a net negative balance of 220. But we will see that under common control, and this is the third and final facet of common control. Number one, assets and liability will be taken over at book value. And number two, as I told you, no new assets will be recognized and that is the reason why we are refraining ourselves from writing here goodwill, correct? Because no new assets should be recognized. That is why I am writing here capital reserve. Is it clear to you? Second point and third point. The third point says that consideration in the books of acquirer company 
consideration in the books of purchasing company will be written not at this price rather at nominal value at nominal value that means i should not write here 50 lakh i should not write here 50 lakh oh my sir this is the point yes this is the point you should never commit this mistake of writing here consideration in the books of purchasing company is it clear to you at the price rather at nominal price not at issue price so consideration you will be forced to write here at 20 lakh now here if i would have told you simply like this because standard says that we have to show the consideration at what we call nominal value many among you would not have understood the replication now see here even though if i am writing here 20 lakh ultimately it is not going to have any effect why it is not going to have any effect See here, I have written here 20 lakh. Now, if I am going to compute the capital reserve, what will be the balance in capital reserve? That will be equal to 220. Now, in this case, because I have written here consideration 20 lakh, so when I will prepare the balance sheet, in under the other equity, I will write minus 220 capital reserve because it is having negative balance. Under both the scenario, you can see in the balance sheet, actually, capital reserve would have been 220, negative 220. Is it clear to you? So nothing will change, even though if we are writing here consideration at nominal value. Is it clear to you or not? So this is the point which you have to understand. Is it clear? Is it clear to you or not why we have written it here at nominal value and why, is, why it is not having the what we call any sort of what we call implications in the balance sheet. But never write it at 50 lakh. Under common control, consideration will be reflected at nominal value and now the next point is the next point is with respect to the discharge of consideration so you will write here consideration because you have shown the consideration at 20 lakh now you will write here consideration 20 lakh and you will write here two share capital you will write here two share capital that is equal to 20 lakh is it clear to you is it clear to one and everyone? Yes, sir, it is absolutely clear. Presuming that it is clear to you, because on your behalf, I have to answer myself. Now you will have to prepare the balance sheet of the new entity. Balance sheet of new entity. I told you earlier that when you are going to prepare the balance sheet of the new entity, all you have to do and focus upon is upon the entries which you have just written here. So when you will prepare the balance sheet, first of all, you are going to write here non-current asset, non-current asset. Under the non-current asset, of course, only one item will appear and that item will be property, plant and equipment. And you have written in the entry property, plant and equipment at 200. So in the outer column, you are going to write here 200. Is it clear to you? And then you will write here current asset only one item under current asset that is current asset itself so you are going to write 1000 so easy not tough so you can straight away write total of the asset side that is equal to 1200 now you will write here equity and liability as far as equity and liability is concerned equity and liability equity and liability as far as equity and liability are concerned please pay attention now, questions say that if share premium will be 30 lakh, the capital reserve will be 190. No, no, no. In that case, the amount of capital reserve is 250. Krishna Gaur, you are forgetting that particular point. Is it clear to you? If I would write here, please pay attention. Instead of 20 lakh, if I am going to write here 50 lakh, please pay attention. My capital reserve would have been 250. Not what we call 220. If I am writing here 20, then capital reserve is 220. So that is the point which you need to keep in your mind. Correct? Anyway, now we come over to the equity and liability. Under the equity and liability, that is why I keep on telling, always pay attention towards each and every point. Now, under the equity and liability side, first of all, we always write equity. Correct? We always write equity. Under the equity, we always write first share capital. Now, this is a new company and this company is issuing share capital of 2 lakh share 
at nominal value of 10. So, because in the entry we have written 20 lakhs, so I will write here 20 lakhs only. Krishna Gaur, I hope the things is clear. Correct? Now, B, other equity. Under the other equity, in this particular case, if you look into the entry, we have capital reserve negative balance. Correct? So, capital reserve I will write and capital reserve is having negative balance of 220. I will write it in bracket. Is it clear to you or not? After that, I will write here liabilities. As far as non-current liability is concerned, because this entity has taken over loans, so it will reflect the loans at 600. And then third current liability, and this entity has taken over current liability worth 800. So total will be equal to 1,000, 1,200. 1,200. Is it clear to you? Is it clear to everyone or not? Now please let me know whether it is clear to everyone or not. Till up to this particular stage. So after having done this particular question, Please try to attempt 2.2 of your own. This question is absolutely on similar lines. Only thing is that figures are doubled or halved of the previous question. Again, this question has been taken from your module. Correct. So, two divisions here, laptops, mobile division, division laptop has been making constant profit. So, this division is making profit, but this division is under the losses. This division is being sold. So, apply the same rules, same procedure. Correct. Same procedures. Krishna God, you what you are not noticing in this particular fact, what you are not noticing under this particular fact, please pay attention. We are not reflecting share premium at all. Share premium is already getting adjusted in this amount. That is the point. Because here we have shown consideration at nominal value. We are not reflecting at share premium. We have, haven't shown share premium at all. Point I told you earlier, if I would have written here 50 lakh, then I would have passed the entry consideration account debit 50 lakh to share capital 20 lakh to security premium 30 lakh. In that case, share premium would have appeared in the balance sheet and net equity would have been 250 capital reserve less security premium 30. Still, the negative amount would have been 220. So, standard says that things to be recorded at nominal value only. That is why we are completely ignoring security premium. But it is not going to have any, any implication because ultimately you can see, even if I would have written here security premium account, it would have got adjusted against capital reserve. So, here when I am writing 220 capital reserve, that means security premium account is getting adjusted against capital reserve. That is the point is which you need to understand. Now, I was talking about this particular point that next question you should be in a position to do as far as Enterprise Limited, Laptop Limited is concerned. This question is similar to the one which we did. You should be in a position to do this question without any problem. Okay, Krishna, if you got it, that is fine. That, so, next question as I was talking, use the same way of doing. First, extract the items of asset. Correct? First, extract the items of the asset. Extract the items of the liability. Your first step should be like this. Under the second step, you have to note down the amount of purchase consideration. Under the third step, you need to know whether the purchase consideration is being received by demersed entity or by the members. Now, in this question, I will tell you later on also, I told you it is similar to the last question. Only thing is that here purchase consideration is 25 crores. Again, nominal value is 10 and per share premium is what we call 15. The last time 2 lakh shares were being issued, this time 1 crore equity shares are being issued. Correct? Now, here in this question actually clearly mentioned that purchase consideration is being given to the members 
And further, this line is also given in this question. One of the members of the enterprise limited holds 52% shareholding in the new company. So obviously in this case, what we call you will have to apply common control method. Is it clear to you? So I've solved the question, but try to refer to solution only and try to do without having a look over the solution. That is the best way to comprehend the things. In the next session when we will meet, we are going to start with 2.3. It's a very heavy question and it's a pretty long question. We'll do that 2.3 and once we shall have done 2.3, honestly speaking, after that you should be in a position to then do question number. Uh, after that one more question was there which I will give you. Uh, but let me do first of, first of all 2.3. And then, sorry, after that, we'll move over to the next section of this particular part. Yes, one more section I have attached here, co common control and acquisition self-attempt. So once we shall once we shall have done actually 2.3, after that, you will do 3.1 and 3.2 of your own. Even both these questions have been picked up from your module. Is it clear to you? Only thing is that we might have refined the names or the dates. Is it clear to you? That's the only thing. Okay, then. So on such note, we take leave of you. Hope the class must have had come up to your expectations. Looking forward to have your feedbacks. I, I keep on telling, I'm very disappointed by this particular fact that hardly we are receiving any comments on YouTube. We don't want comments on your chat boxes, to be very honest with you. In the chat boxes, definitely it is a nice way of getting the things, doubts erased out. But after that, please take the pain off. Please take the, we are taking so much of pain for you, correct? Take the pain of writing some comments so that other people who actually see, they also get motivated and become part of this fraternity. And we are hoping and doing level best effort. As I've told you, I haven't done it just for the sake of saying. We will see to it that each one of you come out with supreme what we call performance. And for that, we are ready to sweat it out. So on such note, we take leave of you and time to say lovely, lovely, lovely good night. Okay then, shall meet you in the next session, correct?